whip upon us this recipe. Start out with yeast. Sit, sit down. Seven and a half sit cups down. of water. And we'll post the uh, recipe for 10 pizzas later. Yeah, I know. In the comments yeah. of the video. <laughs> Some of the key points that a lot of people make a mistake with is when they put in flour, they put uh, oil right on the flour. And that tends to encapsulate the flour, which causes uh, a barrier to gluten formation. So essentially what you want to do is the first step is hydrate the yeast. So we come out. The recipe is a uh, half kilo of high gluten flour, half kilo of low gluten flour, 600 milliliters of water, which is about two and a half cups, 14 grams of yeast, 23 grams of salt, and 17 grams of sugar. Um, 17 grams is just under like a tablespoon. Okay. But take a look at the hydrating stuff. And we'll pause. So we've given it 10 minutes and I realized I only have 2.26 kilos of oh, flour no. here. So I separated out the uh, yeast, sugar and water mix. 10 minutes to sit by, you can see the slight foaming and the slight bubbling. Uh, if yours doesn't bubble, that means you either use water that was too cold or you didn't wait long enough. Uh, one of two things. So you want the bubbles. You want the slight foamy. Uh, you can smell it. Slight. <laughs> You're cruising for a piece of ass, Gus. Oh, we've got some here. <laughs> How much are you having? Uh, I took it down to 2.26, then took out a little extra, so I have some flour left to uh make the pizza so when you're using it you don't want to put salt directly into the water and yeast mixture either because that will slow down the uh yeast just increasing your pizza making time so at about this point let's see <laughs> Salt, 23 grams. I paid for it once already. 23 times, three. 69. 69. I was already getting all that stuff. Would you try this? So, yeah, I have, I, on and off. Go ahead. I have another race. Wait, where do I get the Burning Man? Keep Burning Man eventually available for it. Look for, 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 look I don't think it's a yeah, I'll find out when the answer is. Matt? Uh, so since you want to start by uh, wetting down all of the flour. The flour can And you'll quickly see that the flour kind of goes to the edges. But if you got your portions right, you should have a decent dough fairly quickly. In the United States, you'll find that about 60% of pizzas are cooked are pepperoni, large pepperoni. In Japan, people like a variety. So they'd rather order four tiny pizzas than one large pizza. And we'd have stuff uh, from teriyaki. We'll be doing a ranch-based pizza today too. Oh, that'd be cool. Which is actually very good. Yeah. You know, we did a mayonnaise-based pizza with uh, mayonnaise and then cheese and bacon bits. And once it came out of the oven, it was covered with fried onions. Ooh. And it was actually extremely good. Yeah. Fresh they are not Do you tend to use heavy toppings? No, or is that's you go light on the toppings. Yeah. You let the flavor do the talking, yeah. not the bulk of it. In the United States, when you make a pizza, and even Italy and all those other places, the reason why they use mozzarella is because it's got a very light flavor, mm -hmm. but it's got a, a big tendency to pick up the flavor from things around it. So if you order a pepperoni pizza, you'll find that even the stuff that doesn't have a pepperoni on it tastes like pepperoni, because mm -hmm. the uh, cheese sucks up that flavor. Mm -hmm. Which is weird, because uh, corn and tuna don't really put out that same type of flavor profile that uh, pepperoni does. Huh. You know, it's just like right there. So what kind of cheese do you like to use? Cheddar? 
I like to use mozzarella, mm -hmm. but uh, nine parts mozzarella, one part provolone, mm -hmm. and that gives it a really nice kind of saltier flavor. Okay, mm -hmm. there's the orange. Cheddar just kind of, unless it's you know, good cheddar, even yeah, good just, cheddar is kind of oily. Yeah, doesn't kind of nasty. quite melt. Yeah. yeah. So talk to me more about so what the, so the the Japanese the pizza you were talking about was what was that in Greece? Tuna? It was corn. It was wasabi the all sauce. All American. They had onions, green peppers, tuna, corn, bacon, sliced garlic. Uh, wasabi mayonnaise and bacon bits. That's what it was. Okay. Any red sauce on it? Was the yeah. red sauce the red base? Sauce. Okay. Yep. Yeah, some of the more creative pizzas I did were the uh, alligator meat. Cool. Which was good. And of course, you can't find it anywhere in Japan, so we imported it from Australia. Uh, teriyaki based stuff is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. Teriyaki chicken. So no red sauce, just teriyaki sauce. Mm -hmm. And then throw like uh, nori seaweed on top mm -hmm. after it comes out of the oven. Pretty good stuff. Cool. Pizza tools. This is what is called a skepper and the pizza cutter. KitchenAid, you can find this on Amazon. One of the best pizza cutters ever made. It's got some heft. Good to cut pizzas. Uh, out on the playa and even at home, when you're letting your dough rise, you can see it's grown. You want to get some wet towel. Ideally, a real towel, not a paper towel. But uh, that avoids the top of the dough becoming crusty. And uh, drink. So you take it out. Uh, after you make it, you cover it in olive oil. That also avoids having it dry out. And where did my flour go? We were having wild monkey sex over in this rave camp the other day. <laughs> uh huh. Well, oh, hey. hey. So, walk us through this. Uh, You're so, we got dough. About enough dough for 23 pizzas. So, we split it up. Uh, 23 ways Eleven, is that what you're five. Ideally, you want to scale and you want to measure out. Hot the pizza sauce up? Sure. Dough balls. How big should the dough balls be? He asked, waiting for a smart ass answer. <laughs> as big as you can take them. <laughs> but uh, it depends on what kind of pizza you want. Uh, 10 inch pizza is about 230 grams. Okay. Which we'll do the conversation later. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have your pizza dough, dough balls cut up. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. That's a big one. You want about an eight cup for an individual pizza. My favorite size. Start again. Uh, Portion out your dough, and you want to find a space, not this ugly space that you cut, but a nice clean space, and fold it, fold it, fold it. And then you get your basic dough ball. Uh, there's a spot at the bottom where you can push the air out. So you've got the top of the bottom, you want to push it at an angle, and you see the little hole at the bottom. Basically leaving that open so you're not closing it with your own uh, strength, and push the air out. And you have a dough ball. Make one more. You can go. Dual entry. So you take your dough ball. Uh, you see it's got a hard outer surface that's been exposed to the air. So it's dried out. And you've got a soft underbelly. Much like Logan. Hey! Hard Did outer service. Now? Hey now. Oh, sorry. Did you hear? Uh, you press it down, and the object is to pull the soft underside out to the outside to make the edge of the pizza. So you can see the line comes up here and goes around there. If you push in the middle, the center gets too thin when you spin it out. So you want to go halfway between the middle and the edge, and just stretch back, stretch back,
and you end up with uh, the hard sauce, hard part in the center, and that soaks up some of the liquid from the sauce and makes a good pizza. So do a little quickly, go around, remembering to avoid touching directly in the center. Otherwise, you have pizza that flops all over the place. Flip it over and do something called edge stretching. Slide one hand across while holding with the other hand and you're basically creating a trough so that when the sauce and cheese melt, uh, it gets somewhere to collect and it makes a well-defined pizza ear. So you get up, up, up. 